Trust in God through it all, through it all. I've learned, I've learned to depend upon His word. Let's sing the first verse, Hallelujah. I've had many tears and sorrows. I've had questions for tomorrow. Thank you, Lord. But in every situation, God give blessed consolation that my trials come to only make me strong. Come on, let's lift our hands and sing through it all. To trust in God through it all, through it all. Oh, hallelujah! Through it all, I've learned to depend. I've learned to depend upon His word. Let's say verse two. Oh, I've been to lots of places and I've seen a lot of faces. There have been times. Jesus lets me know that I was his own. Oh, let's sing through it all. Through it all. Oh, Lord, we will trust you. Through it all. We will depend on you, Lord. I've learned to trust in Jesus. Oh, I've learned, I've learned, I've learned to trust in God. Through it all. Through it all. Come on, let's lift our hands and say through it all, through it all, oh, through it all. I've learned, I've learned to trust in Jesus. Oh, I've learned to trust in God. Through it all, through it all, hallelujah. Through it all, I've learned, I've learned to depend. thankful to be here. Thank you, Pastor Lawrence and Iris, and thank you, People's Church. And I keep hearing about People's Church, hearing about People's Church, and uh, unfortunately, because I'm a pastor, I don't get away from much from my church, amen? And so, you know, uh, I don't get to come visit most Sundays, but uh, on the few Sundays that I have been able to be here through the years, I've been richly blessed and be able to come and be a part of your church family as God has moved it along. When I, when I was about five to six years old, we lived in the projects of Prince George, the projects of Prince George was the Aspica Apartments. This is where almost all the welfare families used to live. And I remember every morning getting up in the welfare projects and going and having fun down in the playground. And then you'd play with some of the other kids. And I met a girl named Bloody Mary because she always just scratched us and clawed at us. And it was nasty. And mom would have to come out and protect us. And, uh, and me and my little sister were out there playing in the projects in the playground all the time. 
And I remember going to, to kindergarten, and at kindergarten is the first place I went to for school. And I remember meeting this little girl, and this little girl lived upstairs just one more floor above us. And that little girl, she, she took a shine into me. I don't know. I don't know if I had a crush on her or something. It was just she was a sweet little girl. But she started inviting me to go to Sunday school. And when she invited me to go to Sunday school, I had to go down and ask mom. And I remember going to the Nazarene church for Sunday school. And then lo and behold, a little bit happened. The family was starting to come, mom, my sister. And I think Clayton was just a little baby then, going to the Nazarene church. And I remember walking on, from the Ospica apartments to the Nazarene church. And it would take a good 45 minutes or so just to get there. But that little girl, five years old, six years old, is the one who got us to start going to church, amen? And I can't believe her mom was on it, she was on it, and I thank God for it, amen? But you know, it didn't start really, it just started the, the seed of a journey. Because I remember, I remember after that, we had the J-dubs come. My mom got a rampage, and you know my mom when she gets on a rampage, right? She's like, what is this thing about God? And she got on a rampage. So we had the J-dubs come, and they were telling all about their stuff. And then we had the Mormons come, and I couldn't watch the Mormon video because it had some stuff in it, right? And I had to go into, the, into my bedroom. And I, I'm sitting there going, because they had Adam and Eve and all that stuff on there. I'm like, what's going on out there? But she went on a journey to find God. But I'm telling you, God was already on a journey to find her, amen? He was on a journey to seek her out and choose her and bring her into relationship with himself. And I'm so thankful for it. And not only her, but myself as well. And God has been so faithful. This woman who was in her, oh man, you would have been what, 24 years old? 20, 22 years old or so at that time. 22 years of age. With this little five-year-old boy. And this little four-year-old girl. And this newborn babe. And God was invading her broken world. And it was absolutely beautiful. I remember she got, she got in, involved in this United Apostolic Church. And we went to this United Apostolic Church. And, you know, they're the Shundababas, all right, right? They just, uh, every time, it's just uh, the whole service, the Shundababa, the whole thing. And it was exciting and vibrant. And my mom loved exciting and vibrant things. And I remember six, seven years of age going to this exciting, vibrant church. And we met downtown Prince George in a Chinese temple. So every church, they had to go and take all the sheets and put them over all the Chinese gods all over the building, right? And as this little six-year-old kid, with all the other little six-year-old kids, we'd run around that Chinese temple and we'd be picking up the sheets and taking a look at this weird thing. And then mom would come running in and the other church leaders would come in. Now we got to go and cleanse the whole place again, amen? And so they'd go around speaking in tongues, cleansing the whole place again. And it was a lot of fun. But you know, my mom, she got involved 100%. And she was sold out for God. It wasn't long after that that we got involved in a Word of Faith church. And you know those Word of Faithers, right? They are excited. They are charismatic beyond the end all, end all. And they were just going, going, going. And my mom got involved in this Word of Faith church. And she was getting pumped up. And she got involved in that church. And we got, uh, we got introduced to the ministry. And that's where she started leading worship and worshiping the Lord and, and loving on Him and loving the people of God. And then she started to fall in love with the other broken people in our world a lot of broken people in our world and so she got involved with what was called the uh, Christian Life Center the Christian Life Center was a ministry that met every Friday night and Saturday night and all they did was open up the doors to street people homeless people the broken the downtrodden the hurting the afflicted the addicted all types of people would come up on Fridays and Saturday nights and you know what they would do up there they would worship God amen they get their, their guitars, their drums, their strums, their violins, whatever it was, and they would just worship God every Friday and Saturday night, and then they would preach the word, and they would share testimonies. And I remember as a little boy, seven, eight, nine years of age, sitting there every Friday, Saturday night, and listening to people share their testimonies, and we'd be sleeping on the pews and in the backyard. And uh, mom taught me how to minister in that place, how to get down with the broken and the downtrodden, and those who were despised and ridiculed, she taught me how to sit with people in brokenness and downtroddenness. And I remember many, many nights 
on Fridays and Saturday nights sitting in the back stairwell with some drunk street person and talking with them and just ministering to them and spending time with them and getting to know their story as eight, nine, ten years of age. Why? Because my mom would drag me down there every Friday and Saturday. And you know why she went down there? To love Jesus and to love people. She didn't get paid. Eventually she got promoted because everywhere you go, you know leaders get promoted, right? Eventually she got promoted as assistant executive director and executive director. Man, you did all kinds of things there too. Yeah. Secretary, everything. I remember after Josie passed away, mama carried the weight of that place. And she felt so heavy burdened for that place. And then I remember in this Word of Faith church, every Sunday night, back then we had church Sunday morning. Can you believe it? And we had church Sunday night. And you know what? It was good. I hated it. Why did I hate it? Because Sunday night was Disney night, right? And so every night, starting at about 6.30, mom's like, we got to go to church. I'm like, what? It just started. I want to watch the Disney movie. No, we're going to church. And she grabbed me by the ear and pulled me out of the church and out of the house, and away we went to church. What? Pardon? And Wednesday night, we went to church. Three times a week. Unheard of, amen? But it was good. Why? Because we went to worship our Lord and Savior. And honor him. I remember one time I wanted to go to my friend's birthday party. Sunday night. Got invited to his friend's birthday party. Most, most uh, popular guy in my class. Really nice guy. And you know what my mom said? She said, you're going to have to come early because we're going to church tonight. You know what? I gave her nothing but grief. Nothing but grief about that. But you know that church that night? That's the night in which the power of the Holy Spirit came upon me and I started speaking in other tongues for the first time in my life. And I tell you, God had to humble me and bring me into his presence, amen? And I'm so thankful for that because I'll never forget that night. Why? Because you got a loving mama who says, no, you need to go and honor the Lord. And I'm thankful for that, amen? He's a good God. He's a faithful God, and he deserves to be worshipped and adored and honored in this lifetime. And so I'm thankful for the work that God did in giving me a faithful mama. I'm thankful for that. And so we are here, the faith that dwelt inside of Eunice that also dwells inside of me. And it goes on to say, for this reason I remind you to fan in the flame the gift of God which is in you. Through the laying on of my hands for God gave us a spirit. He gave us a spirit. He gave you a spirit. He gave me a spirit. If you've received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you have a spirit, the Holy One, the Holy Spirit of God. It's not a spirit of fear. That word means timidity or cowardice. But it is a a spirit of power and of love and of self-control. Therefore, because that spirit lives inside of you, do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner. But I challenge you, share in the suffering for the good news by the power of God who saved us and called us to a holy calling. And I'm here to tell you this morning, there are two things that I recognize about my mom. One, God didn't give her a spirit of fear, amen, of timidity, of cowardice. No, he gave her a spirit of bravery, a spirit of power, a spirit of love, and a spirit of self-control. And it's a beautiful spirit because it's the Holy Spirit. Amen. And he also challenged her to not be ashamed. And I'll tell you what. I know this. She is in a part of the fellowship of the unashamed. Amen. And I believe there's a lot of people in this room who are part of that same fellowship of the unashamed. For I am not ashamed of the gospel. For it is the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed. For the just shall live by faith. And how many people here this morning are of that same faith? Amen. I'm of that faith and I believe you're of that faith. And God is here. And you know, he... He, he birthed this gospel inside of my mom. He birthed this gospel inside of me. And she has not been ashamed of that her entire life. She's been willing to lay down her life for the good news. 
Oh, there are front ministry people, right? Pastor Lawrence, he's one of the front ministry people. You get to see his face. And then there are back ministry people, amen? And you don't necessarily see their face. Why? Because they're buzzing around like birds out there, getting things done. And you don't ever see them because they're like, hi. And then they're, boom, they're off over here. Hi, boom, over here. And they're serving, 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 and serving. You know who got to see their, her face more? Your kids, amen? She loved on your kids. And she made sure your kids have a safe place and a good place to get the gospel. Why? Because 43 years ago, there was a Sunday school which was a safe place. For her boy, amen? Five years of age. And I'll tell you, it was in that Sunday school that I remember listening to that Sunday school teacher, and all she did was love on this little brown boy. Just loved on him. And that's where I started to experience the love of Jesus through somebody else, amen? And the grace of Jesus through somebody else. And I'll tell you, it's probably why She's got this passion and this burden for your children, that they come to know who Jesus is through Sunday school. So don't be shy sending your kids to Sunday school, and don't be shy having your kids invite other kids to Sunday school, amen? Because 43 years later, you never know where they're going to be preaching or what they're going to be doing or how they're going to be ministering, amen? So I'm here to tell you, bring them in. Bring them in. Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed of the good news of Jesus Christ. It transforms lives. Causes us to become born again. Brand new. A new creature in Jesus Christ. Old things pass away and behold all things become new. And he changes us on the inside and transforms us. Every single person needs to become, become born again. Amen. People out there in the world today are saying, well, I was born this way. Yeah, you were born that way. Guess what? You need to be born again. Amen. You need to be born again. And so, keep on preaching the good news of Jesus Christ. But I'm here to tell you, there's something about ministry. See, Paul writes 2 Timothy at the end of his ministry. It's about A.D. 67. He's in prison. He knows the end is soon. He's writing to his son in the faith, Timothy, who is an apostle at the church of Ephesus. And he is recounting what has occurred to him over the tenure of his ministry. And I'll tell you, the one challenge that Paul gives to Timothy and the one challenge that he gives to every single one of us who name the name of Jesus Christ and are willing to lay down our lives for Jesus Christ, he gives this challenge. You've not received the spirit of fear, but you've received the spirit of power and love and self-control. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share in suffering. Share in suffering. This is the challenge of being a child of the Most High God, is to share in suffering. If you are ever in ministry and you are ever willing to lay down your life for the Lord Jesus Christ in whatever form of ministry you take on, serving your family, serving your kids, serving in your local church, serving in the Sunday school, serving in the sound, serving in the video, serving in the ushering, serving wherever you serve, wherever you serve, taking on that role of ministry, guess what? I guarantee you, you're going to experience some suffering. You're going to experience some suffering. Whenever you walk out unashamed of the good news of Jesus Christ and willing to share it with anybody else, you're going to experience some suffering. There will be mother against daughter, father against son, Brother against sister. That's just in your house, amen? Never mind outside of your house. There's going to be some suffering. And I sit here and I think, 25 years part of People's Church. 22 years in the ministry of People's Church. And you know, I wonder what type of suffering she's experienced over those 22 years. 
I sit here and I read what Paul shares about his suffering. Would you follow along with me? Open up your Bibles if you got your Bibles. Just a few more minutes. I don't know what time. There's no clock in here. There's a trap door, though. I know there's a trap door, and it's going to fall. There it is right there. So I'm going to stay away from that spot, amen? I'll stay right here. He didn't even tell me how long I get to preach. Thank you. Good. Praise the Lord. You see, he goes on to say multiple times in 2 Timothy, he's talking. He says, suffering is a part of the ministry, brother. Suffering is a part of the ministry. Verse 11 of chapter 1. For which I was appointed a preacher, an apostle, and a teacher, which is why I suffer as I do. But I am not ashamed. For I know whom I have believed and am convinced that he is able to guard that day what has been entrusted to me. But suffering has been a part of it. Verse 15, you are aware that all who are in Asia turned away from me, among whom are Phygelus and Hermogenes. And I tell you, when you get into ministry, either in the front court or in the back court, you're going to experience suffering, and you're going to experience similar to what Paul experienced here. You know what this is? Those who turned away from him, that means that he was abandoned over and over and over again. Hard to believe, amen? Amen. The greatest preacher that we know of history other than Jesus Christ himself. The father of the church in many different ways. Throughout the known world at that time. And he was abandoned over and over and over again by people who were close to him. Whole churches abandoned him. Pastor Lawrence, I don't know if you've had a whole church abandon you yet. It doesn't look like that, amen. But sometimes it can feel like that. When you're going in ministry and swaths of people end up and just walk out of church and no longer become, be a part of that church. We have a church in our town where uh, a new mega church preacher came in and started building a church. Half of one of the churches in the countryside, all the families got up and went to that new church. Do you know how much that hurts? The abandonment that occurs. And it goes everywhere. You live in a much bigger city than me. I live in a small city of 12,000 people. You know how many churches we got in that city? 13 churches. There's a flavor on every corner, amen? It's like Starbucks in that city. Man, you got Tim Hortons in that city. You can stop in church here, stop in church there, stop in church there. And there's people moving from church to church all the time. There's barely any faithfulness. Faithfulness. That's one of the things I loved about hearing the testimonies today. 18 years. Since 2008, since 2007, there's a a core community of faithful brothers and sisters in this family, amen? And you need them. We need them, amen? Give them a hand clap. That's right. Faithful brothers and sisters who haven't abandoned the work of the ministry. Come hell or high water. Come abandonment by people and swaths of people and families of people. People who were key and instrumental in the church who just get up and walk away. It happens, brothers and sisters. It happens. It happens. Suffering. Suffering. And here's what I'm here to tell you this morning. Expect it. Amen. For God has not given us a spirit of timidity or cowardice, but he's given us a spirit of power and of love, and of a sound mind. Why? Because he loves us. He loves us. He loves us. I tell you, suffering is going to occur. Look with me at chapter 2, would you? Look at this. You then, my child, be strengthened by the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And what you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, entrust to faithful others who will be able to teach others also. Share in, what's your Bible say? Hardships. You know what my Bible says? It's better than your Bible, amen. It says sufferings, amen. I'm just kidding. It's a good same Bible. It says sufferings. Share in sufferings as a good what? Soldier of Christ Jesus, Amen. No soldier gets entangled in the civilian pursuits as his aim is to please him, Jesus, the righteous one, who enlisted him. And then work as an athlete. I'll tell you, I train athletes right now in the U18 division of senior girls volleyball, and I'm making them every practice. Guess what I'm making them do? Suffer. Amen? Every practice, I want them to suffer. 
Why? Because they need to train as athletes so that they can play as quality elite athletes. Amen? And you can't get that unless you suffer. That's right. And so they're suffering. But soon, that suffering will turn into what? Glory. Glory. That's right. Guess what? My first tournament. Gold medals. Amen? I couldn't believe it. Nobody could believe it. They're like, who are these dragons? I'm like, that's us, amen? We're getting out there and we're breathing fire everywhere because we're going to play hard. Why? Because we have learned how to suffer and get better. And so you and I in the ministry, whatever God has given to us, we have to learn how to handle the suffering and how to handle the suffering well. Verse 16 of chapter 2. But avoid irreverent Babylon. For it will lead people into more and more ungodliness, and their talk will spread like gangrene. Among them are Hymenaeus and Philetus. You know what I love about Paul? He's not afraid to name names, amen? He's not afraid to name names. You know, we live in a, in a society now that's so afraid to offend people, amen? So afraid to offend people. I'll tell you what. You sit with this Bible just a few minutes, and it will offend you. Especially if you don't know Jesus Christ, Amen? Why? Because it tells you that you're a dirty, rotten, filthy scoundrel without him, amen, and that you need him. It will offend you that every person, there is no one godly, no, not one. All have sinned and turned away. There is none that seek him, no, not one. They've all turned aside, and they love evil and not the light. But God is gracious still to them, amen? And I'm here to tell you this morning, the suffering is experienced and it's real. Most of the suffering is the relationships, the people in our life, the people that we entrusted things to, thinking they were faithful people, and then all of a sudden they proved themselves unfaithful. Unfaithful. I think of the 22 years here, but I also think of my mom's life walking with God. I remember... Nine years of age, I come home from a summer away, and there was a guy that she fell in love with, thinking he was a faithful man. Six years later, we find out he was not a faithful man. Amen? Abandonment, suffering, pain. Several, several years ago, she met another man who she thought was a faithful man who proved himself to be an unfaithful man, suffering, more suffering. That's just the people in the personal life. Never mind the people in the ministry life. Because this gets right close to home many times, amen? When you endeavor to live a righteous and a godly life to honor him, things pop up. And suffering occurs. But through it all, through it all, I learned to trust in Jesus. I learned to trust in God. Through it all, through it all, I've learned to depend upon his word and I have to say men have not been good to my mom for the most part but I am thankful that there have been men in this room and in this church family who have been good to her amen But above all that, turn to chapter 4, would you? Second Timothy. Above all that. You could go on. You can read about Janus and Jambres who opposed Moses, corrupted men, the false teachers that came against Paul that he had to deal with, the persecution in the church, the persecution outside of the church. You can even look at the verse 14 of chapter 4 about Alexander the coppersmith who did him great harm. 
And he just turned Alexander over to the Lord and said, Lord, you repay him. You repay him. You take care of that. I am sure my mom, through 22 years of ministry here and years of ministry others, has had to learn over the years, Lord, you take care of that. Amen? That's in your hands. Because through it all, I'm going to keep trusting you. Why? What's verse 17 say of chapter 4? But the Lord, the Lord. Yes, men stood with me in the ministry. Yes, sometimes I felt abandoned. Yes, people came alongside of me and they, they encouraged me. But I'm telling you, there's somebody else. There's somebody else more than them who stood by my side through all these years, and that person strengthened me, and his name is the Lord Jesus Christ, amen? And he stands beside me now, and he not just stands beside me, he stands over me. He stands in front of me. He stands around me. He stands underneath me. He's my rear reward. He prepares a way for me. In fact, he even prepares a table for me in the presence of mine enemies, amen? Surely goodness and mercy shall pursue me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever ever and ever and ever and when you get through with all the forevers then amen amen and I'm telling you God has stood by her and I've seen it happen you know I know my mom loves Jesus because God's given her a spirit of power and of love now some of you in this room you know what it's like to fall in love with somebody when you fall in love with somebody, you tend to become absolutely enamored with them. Amen? What they love, you love. What they do, you want to do. You remember the beginning of your relationship? Oh, she likes to go for walks. I'm going for walks with her. Oh, she likes to go and play crib. I'm going to play crib with her. Oh, she likes to go and do this. I'm going to go and do that. Whatever she was interested in, you were there like a puppy dog behind her. Amen? Amen? How many women remember that time, right? Yeah, I see the wives uh, jostling and bugging. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then, you know, a couple of years later, right? Where is he? What's he doing? Where did he go? And then some things just transform over time. But here I'm, I'm going to tell you a secret. When you love somebody, you're not only interested in them. You're interested in what they're interested in. Amen? And if some of you have fallen out of love... Start getting interested in what she's interested in, amen? And start getting interested in what he's interested in. And start giving yourself to that. You remember the years of old? You would have this old guy sitting in the driveway underneath the vehicle working on it. Guess where the woman was? Guess where the lady was? No, no, no. She was sitting in a chair out there watching him work on the, on the car. Why? Because she loved him. She was interested in what he was interested in. Oh, she was just sitting there gabbing away while he was tinkering away. But she sacrificed her time to be interested in what he was interested in. Now, I'm here to tell you this is how I know my mom loves Jesus. Because Jesus is interested in you. Amen? He's interested in you. Why? Because you're his bride. Amen? And he loves you with an undying love. And I'll tell you, if you love Jesus, you're going to love who Jesus loves. Amen? You're going to love what Jesus loves. And Jesus loves his church. And I'll tell you what, she has loved this church. She sacrificed for this church, gave for this church, abandoned other things for this church. She even abandoned me in some ways for this church. Amen? And guess what? I'm happy for that. Mom, you coming for Christmas? No, I got to get down and do some, some food delivery for the homeless people. What? You ain't coming for Christmas? No, I got to go and love people here. Amen? She loved this church, and she loved the ministry that God had for her. And you know, sometimes that hurt, but guess what? Over time, God had to reveal to me this important truth. If you love me, you'll love what I love. And I love my bride. And I learned that from her. And she loves you, the bride of Christ. And she's willing to sacrifice for you. Why? Because Jesus is in her. The spirit of faith. Amen. And so I honor her. I honor her. My last challenge, and then I'm going to close. Oh, man, I'm eight minutes over. Forgive me. I love how they put the zero there. Chapter 4, verse 1. I charge you, church, in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, him who is to judge the living and the dead, 
and by his appearing in kingdom. I challenge you, church, preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Be ready to reprove, rebuke, and exhort, and complete patience, as we heard my mama has patience and teaching. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but have itching ears. They will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions, and they will abandon you and turn away from listening to the truth, and they'll wander off into myths and all kinds of crazy things that are out there. But as for you, church, always be sober-minded. And what's it say here? Endure suffering. Endure suffering, church. Endure it. Do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry that God has for you. Oh, and be poured out like a drink offering. For soon you will be with him. I fought the good fight. I finished the race. I kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all others in this room who look forward to the day of his appearing. Amen. And mom, that's for you. That's for you. I want to read you, mom, this verse 18 of chapter 4. The Lord will rescue me from every evil deed. He's going to rescue you. From every evil deed. Things people say about you. Things people have done to you. All kinds of stuff. He's going to rescue you from all of it. And he will bring you safely. Into his heavenly kingdom. Amen. He's going to bring you safely. Hallelujah. In church. That's not just for my mama. That's for every one of us. There are people in this room, you've been hiding, you've been under, in the back, doing whatever, or just coming to church on Sunday, doing your thing. I challenge you, I challenge you, serve, endure suffering, get a hand in it, amen? Get some sweat into it, do some work. I love walking into this church and seeing people here, people there, everywhere. There's a lot of servants in this church, amen? That's really awesome. Keep on serving. Keep on being faithful. Endure suffering. And wear it. And know that it is going to turn into glory. For I know that this light affliction will endure but for a moment. But it is preparing for me a weight of glory. A weight of glory. Endure. Be faithful to the end. In Jesus' mighty name. I'll pray. Father in heaven. I come before you, and I thank you for this cloud of witnesses that's in this room. Yeah. I thank you that they love you, yeah. and they've been called according to your name out of darkness yeah. and into your powerful, marvelous light. I pray, Lord, that they would light up this place, yeah. this yes. whole region, this whole area, Lord Jesus. Lord, that they would receive a burden from you to reach the loss that's in this region right here. All around this place, the apartment buildings over here, the houses over here. Lord, their friends, their family, the little boys and girls who their, friends are, who their kids are, are friends with, Lord Jesus. In their schools, Lord Jesus. Lord, may they be shining lights in the middle of a crooked and perverse generation. Holding forth the word of life that others may see it. And that they might come to know the good news of what Jesus Christ has done for us. That he died on a cross for our sins. Took our, the wrath of God upon himself. So that we might live forever in his righteousness. And in his joy. And in his peace. And in his glory. Thank you Jesus. Amen. You might be standing here today. And you've sort of felt like you're on the outside looking in. But you've just heard of the power of the gospel. How God can take a broken life and change it. And cause that family to become a glory unto God. We're standing here today, you know, with a trophy. Somebody who has been washed in the blood of the Lamb. Their lives have been changed. 
and they've made their lives count for God. I wonder how many are standing out here today and you'd say, Pastor Lawrence, I want to know this Jesus. I want to know this one who can love me in my broken state, in my heartache, in my woundedness. I want to know this one who can come and heal and give me new direction, give me a new life. If you're standing here today and God's tugging at your heart, you know how you know he's tugging at your heart? Because your insides are going to be churning. Your heart, your conscience is going to be saying, you need Jesus. Would you just slip up your hand? Identify that God's touching you in a special supernatural way so that we can pray with you. All over this auditorium, if you're standing here today and you're saying, I'm broken, but I want to be healed. I'm on the outside looking in, but I want to get on the inside so that I can learn how to become all that God wants me to become. Let me see your hand. Just hold it up and say, I'm, I'm a candidate for change. Pray out loud with me and say, Dear Lord Jesus, Dear Lord Jesus I'm asking you today, asking you today to, become to become my Lord and Savior. Forgive me for my sin, Forgive me for, my sin. for being a sinner. And make, me your child. and make me your child right now. Right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.